What's up, Halloween lovers? We all know Halloween's on the way, so in keeping with the season, I figured I'd share 10 of my favorite movies to watch during the Halloween season. Now, disclaimer, this is not a complete and definitive list or a best of, nor is it ordered in any way. These just happen to be 10 movies that I own and repeatedly enjoy, especially around Halloween. And maybe along the way, I can give you a few ideas of some you might enjoy as well. So without further ado, starting us off is Trick or Treat. Now, although this one came out in 2007, I only saw it for the first time in 2017. But I really, really liked it. It's an anthology style film with four different stories, all of which are bridged by a main theme involving this Cuba creepy little guy here. And it's actually kind of cool because the last story of the film actually tells his story, which ties it all together up nicely. Now, I won't say too much about all the other chapters because I don't want to give away any surprises for first time viewers. But overall, it's a fun film and perfect for starting off your holiday season. Next up is a total and complete classic. And if you've never heard of it, regardless of how old or young you are, then you really need to get out more. Directed by the master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock, Psycho is the definitive ride into creepiness. Based on a novel by Robert Block, which was inspired by serial killer Ed Gein, who also inspired the movie The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Psycho grabs you from the opening moments and never lets you go, all the way to the shock ending that still makes me jump and creeps me out, no matter how many times I watch it. And as an added bonus, watch the original trailer. It's easily one of the most clever and original movie previews you'll ever see. It's just another testament to Hitchcock's skill at luring you in and keeping you wanting more. Now in 1981, John Landis gave us what I feel to be one of the greatest modern werewolf movies of all time, and which also helped spawn a whole slew of other werewolf movies throughout the early 80s. Now, American Werewolf in London was, for its time, so very fresh and innovative, and to me, ushered in the theme of modern urban horror, where the monster was no longer hiding in some old abandoned castle in the old country in Transylvania or something, but now could be roaming right around your own city or even live next door to you. Now, intensified with incredible special effects by FX master Rick Baker, the film gave us a whole new kind of werewolf, and one that transfixed us as we watched him literally metamorphosize from man into beast with breathtaking results. Now add in a perfect blend of humor and horror, and you've just got an amazing cinematic treat. I mean, when you have a werewolf painfully transforming to the sound of Creedence Clearwater Revival's Bad Moon Rising, what more can you say? Definitely a Halloween treat. Moving on, we come to the first and what I might call my blood-sucking trinity. Now when it comes to monsters, I'm a vampire person, tried and true. And while there are a few decent vampire movies out there, three of my absolute favorites all come from the mid to late 80s. And though they all seem a little dated by today's standards, they still offer up a lot of horrific fun. First up is Fright Night starring Chris Sarandon as the delightfully evil yet charming vampire next door, Jerry Dandridge, as well as classic actor Roddy McDowell as the great vampire hunter slash late night horror TV host, Peter Vincent. This is just a good modern day urban vampire tale with some awesome characters. And Jerry Dandridge is just the perfect blend of a charismatic vampire that can get you to invite him into your house only to revert back to the evil demon he is and snap your neck three seconds later. It's a lot of fun and a good solid vampire flick. Near Dark is one of those overlooked movies that I think got lost in the shuffle because I don't think it was really promoted as a vampire movie. Now when Caleb meets May in a small Midwest town where he lives, he has no idea the series of events he's opening up himself up for. 
Turns out she's part of a pack of nomadic vampires that have been traveling around and wreaking havoc all over the state. And now that May has bled him, well, they're all quite insistent on him being initiated into their fold or have him die trying. The standout scene and personal favorite for me has to be the bar scene. And you'll know it when you see it. It chills me to the bone every time. Now, Lost Boys is a true 80s horror classic and probably the best known out of my three vampire picks. You've got two teen brothers, Michael and Sam, who have just moved to the small seaside town of Santa Carla, which in reality was the boardwalk at Santa Cruz, California, where part of the movie was filmed. Michael meets a girl on the boardwalk and takes a liking to her, not knowing, of course, that she's hooked in with a little clan of vampires. Now his chasing after her leads him to become entangled with the male members of that brood who are intent on turning him into a vampire as well. Now while it's not a super scary movie, there are still a few creepy elements throughout as well as quite a bit of humor. And the latter is provided mostly by a pair of weird vampire hunting brothers, the Frog Brothers, that keep trying to convince Michael's brother Sam that his brother needs to be done away with. Now, no Halloween movie fest would be complete without this classic horror double feature. Night of the Living Dead is a perfect Halloween movie. George Romero's horrific zombie flick has everything you need to send chills down your spine and keep you looking into shadows long after you finish the movie. I mean, a group of scared, Helpless people trapped in a remote farmhouse surrounded by zombies trying to get in to eat them. I mean, how can you top that? Well, how about going forward about 10 years and having a group of scared, helpless people trapped in an old shopping mall surrounded by zombies all trying to get in to eat them? Only then, you throw in a few angry bikers who are trying to get into the mall as well, and you've really got yourself a shock fest. These two are definitely a pair of Halloween horror classics. My next pair of creepy horror classics come straight out of the early 70s. This pair of anthology films based on the old EC comics may seem kind of hokey nowadays, but they still hold a certain place in my black little heart. Both Tales from the Crypt and its sequel, Vault of Horror, consist of five different stories, all framed around the premise of five strangers finding themselves trapped in a room with no apparent way out. As each of the creepy stories unfold, they soon find out that their being there may be more than just a coincidence, and that their only way out is death. And I've got to say that the ending of Tales from the Crypt has stuck with me a lot of years. It's easily one of the most gruesome and horrific deaths you will ever find in a movie. And the beauty of it all is that you never actually see it on screen. Just the suggestion of it will make you cringe. Now as vampires go, you have two types. The pretty, glittery, twilight kind, and the badass, blood-sucking demons that the Gecko brothers come across in From Dusk Till Dawn. Now what starts out looking like a tense crime movie quickly descends into a scene out of hell as two vicious gangsters take a family hostage and then try to hide out in a south-of-the-border bar called the Titty Twister. Now it's in this den of thieves that they find themselves trapped and surrounded by a hungry horde of vampires and have to try and fight their way out with the help of a few unlikely allies. Now this turns into a veritable gore fest. And while the movie itself is nothing Oscar winning, it's still a lot of fun. And when you consider the cast that's in it, it makes it even more amazing. I mean, you've got people like George Clooney, Quentin Tarantino, Harvey Keitel, Juliette Lewis, Selma Hayek, 
Cheech Marin, Danny Trejo, Fred Williamson, and special effects person Tom Savini, all in this movie, looking like they're having the time of their lives, just whipping some vampire ass. What more can you ask for as you go into the Halloween season? Now, I know our next pick might seem out of place alongside the rest of the movies that were on this list, but it's still a good, solid Halloween movie nonetheless. Disney's Hocus Pocus tells the story of the Sanderson sisters, three witches who were hung by the townspeople in Salem in 1693. Well, 300 years later, they're brought back to life by a Halloween-hating teenager who then has to find a way to do away with them again to save his sister from becoming one of their victims. It's just another fun film that will brighten up your Halloween season. Now, the last movie on our list is kind of a cheat because it's not really a movie at all. It's more of a collection. And that being anything in Universal's classic monster collection. Any one of these classic old movies is perfect to watch during Halloween. I mean, you've got Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, The Wolfman, Bride of Frankenstein, Creature from the Black Lagoon, and The Phantom of the Opera. These are the ones that started it all. And when you add in all the sequels, the sons of, and the daughters of, and the houses of, and the ghosts of. You could spend the entire month of October watching nothing but these movies. Pop one of these bad boys in, turn out the lights, make a bowl of popcorn and settle on the couch under a blanket, and maybe pull your partner in under with you, and you have all the makings of a perfect Halloween movie night. So there you go. 10 of my favorite movies to watch around Halloween. What did you think? Do any of them make your list too? Or if you tried one of them for the first time, what did you think of it? Leave us a comment below and let us know.